What's up guys, it's Eli here with Night Jiu Jitsu and I'm here with Taylor and uh, we've been last couple of weeks talking about some K-Guard stuff and looking at kind of a sequence and I feel like I try to like simplify the approach a little bit as far as the entries, as far as the usages of it, and as far as stringing together different options out of it. So we don't get there and we just have to go through a Rolodex of, well, what am I supposed to do now? So you feel it more energetically. So this is kind of what I mean. We're gonna go through and look at the entry and then some different options, just kind of from energetic reactions. If um, Taylor's here inside my guard, I'm gonna start from closed guard. And the thing about this that is really good is that K-Guard is a good kind of attacking guard. So if you get somebody who's just stagnating and they've got a really good, strong structure and they're not wanting to make too many moves, this is a good one to uproot them and start to really get them uh, guessing about stuff. So the first thing, if I'm able to, I wanna get my, my grip of my guard low down around her hips. So I'm gonna cross my ankles down here like this and um, she should probably have her hands on me. So I'm gonna bridge up and as I go to separate, I'll pull her hands apart and lift with my legs. Now what this does is it breaks her posture and I know how she's gonna probably react. She's probably gonna try to get that posture right back, right? The other thing it does though, is it's gonna open up a space. Let's turn this way a little bit. It's gonna open a space behind this leg here. If I just try to scoop that leg, there may not be any space because the, the calf and the hamstring are connected. So instead I'm gonna go here, I'm gonna lift, I'm gonna uproot. Now look, as she goes to sit back up, I've already got my hook inside here. So now my hands are gonna to come together and clasp and I'm gonna bring my knee to the center. As I do this though, I wanna have active legs to where I'm biting with this one and my shoelaces are connected on this side. So I've got this structure inside of her torso. So that's gonna to help to control her posture. Now, one of the first things that we can start to do, one of the simplest, most direct things, not the easiest, but simplest, is to look for the flower sweep. So the, on the flower sweep, I'm gonna drive and pull this leg so that she has to resist and give me her weight. So as she goes to do that and gives me her weight, now I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna catch this tricep. My shin is gonna go inside her bicep, so I'm loading her weight up on my hamstring, and that's gonna make this flower sweep or pendulum sweep more accessible. So I'm uprooting here, I'm gonna take her to my left, and now just to make sure that I'm not awkward when I land, I'm gonna take this leg out of the way and slide up keep that leg high so I can establish my mount. So one more time on this one, what it looks like is I'm going here, getting my low grip if I can. I'm bridging my hips, splitting the difference here, taking the hands off me, getting my hook here under her leg. So as she goes back, I'm getting my shin inside the torso. I go here, I start to uproot, uproot, uproot. I grab that tricep, my shin's in the bicep, and then I sweep all the way over. Now, so that's, Maybe one of the first things. Now, I think that a good strategy for attacking from, from the guard, especially closed guard, is to threaten a combination of sweep, submission, submission, sweep, back and forth so they have constantly not just multiple things to worry about, but different modalities to worry about. They're worried about their base over here, now they're worried about their limb, now they're worried about their neck. So we're gonna, one of the first combos that we'll do that way, same strategy, I get my same setup, boom, like this. But when I go here now, I feel like this arm is extended enough or accessible enough whenever I grab that tricep tendon that now I can start, as I go to sweep and get her horizontal posture, now I can start to spin around. I wanna, it's important that my tailbone doesn't face this way. I need my tailbone facing this way. So it's not just about getting my leg around because that's not gonna amount to anything. It's about turning my hips this way so that when I bite, my hamstring's all the way by her neck. And I don't wanna let go of her elbow if I don't have to, and I don't have to right now. So right here, I can finish the armbar maybe, or I can dump her over like this, and now I can finish that armbar with her in the supine position instead, right? So one more time, the way that we're looking to set this armbar up here, I'm uprooting. Another, an alternative way, if I can't get a good grip here, maybe she's too wide or my legs are too short, then uh, another way I can do it is make this leg heavy and this leg light up into her lap. So that, now, I'm gonna take her posture a little broken this way, and it's gonna still open up on this side, so I'm gonna grab that inside here. As she goes to posture, I fill the space with my shin, I start to uproot, uproot. Boom, I grab here on the tricep, my shin's in the bicep, but I feel like, ah, oh, this arm's accessible, so now my leg comes out, and I'm gonna slide this way. So look at the shift of my butt here. Oh, now, I dump her over onto her back. Now I can finish that arm bar from here, right? Now, of course, anytime that you go to threaten the armbar from closed guard, one of the most common responses is they're gonna pull their arm away. They may do this a couple different ways. They may retract back, they may posture up. But whenever they pull that arm out, typically what they leave behind is their head and the other arm, which usually that should be a big red flashing sign that triangle is available around the corner. So now we're gonna look at the triangle setup from here. 
So as I go, whichever side, whichever way I go to set this K guard up, boom, here like this, and I'm threatening. Now I come back, I try to get that arm, but she's a little savvy, boom, here. Now, instead, like this is a common mistake, I think. Uh, mistake's a strong word, but this is a common response, is that when you lose that arm, people try to spin here. And look at all that space, and look at our posture is not compromised at all. So instead, what I'm looking to do when I lose that, because I'm already on this side, I'm gonna put my quad here on her neck. As I do that here, now I'm gonna let go of this arm and I'm gonna grab the leg on the other side as I shift just from the hips. Now, because I shifted from the hips, it drug her arm with me and I didn't have to use this hand to try to pull that arm across. Now, as I go to finish here, I just cross up. My knees are already facing the same direction, which tells me the triangle is a good position. And so let's look at that one more time. As we go, I get my cake guard, right? I go here, I want that arm. I'm gonna come around, she pulls the arm clear. I'm gonna put my quad, boom, up here. I have to lift my hip, get my quad on her neck. My knees are pointing this direction. I'm gonna shift so that my knees are pointing 180 degrees the other direction now, right? And look at this here. This is already so tight, I probably don't even have to cross to get a choke, but I wanna make the connection so she doesn't posture out. And then I'm gonna get that triangle. Now though, what if, the triangle is not accessible. Why wouldn't the triangle be accessible? Let's say it that way. Because maybe when she pulls that arm out from the arm lock, she stays this way a little too much and I don't feel like I can pick that triangle back up. But when in doing that, and she gives me this perpendicular horizontal posture, she still leaves this arm here behind. So I'm gonna take this hand, and I'm gonna grab that wrist here. And then I'm gonna slide my hamstring, my bottom hamstring to the back of her arm here. And now my omoplata is in range. So on the omoplata, it's important to do this. Um, instead of trying to figure for the arm and leaving a big gap to her for, so she can limp arm her arm out of there, right? Instead, I'm gonna put my hamstring on her bicep, my quad on her tricep. So just the pinch of my upper legs is not gonna allow her arm to escape, right? Now I'm gonna cross low by the ankles, not figure four, but low by the ankles. And I wanna drive my heels toward the floor. As I go to do that, that, if that flattens her out here this way, that's gonna give me the access to be able to come up. I wanna slide across, now I S-curve, and now I can finish with omoplata, right? Now, if instead, from here, we go through all that, I start to get into this omoplata position. Again, let's do that a little less sloppy. So when we go here, I go here, she pulls the arm out, her head is gone, I'm gonna capture, boom, like this. So I tuck her hand in my pocket, my quad goes to her tricep, I've got this pinch. As I go to drive forward, sometimes this person on top so that they don't collapse will drive their weight over me in order to try to shut down. Because if my hips are angled this way, it's not gonna be good for me, I'm not gonna be able to sit up and finish. But in doing that, she gives me access to her weight. So I'm gonna keep this grip that I have in her leg that I set up all the way back at K-Guard, and I'm gonna punch this over my head and extend my arms out, and then that is gonna roll her over. As I come up, I sit down and try to smash this bicep as much as I can. And if I do a good job, I should be able to get a short arm bar to where her pinky, I take it to the floor and it doesn't make it, right? Sometimes bent arm works, sometimes wrist lock. Depends on, you've got different options from there. Sometimes you can also spin back, get the mount, get an arm bar, get a monoplata. I'm not gonna go through all that because this is a K-guard video. But what happens now, I lose the far arm, I lose the head and arm, I lose the near arm. So now what am I left with? I'm left with lower body. So we get to the lower body attacks here. And what's, what we're gonna look at from here is as she's turning away from me, and this might be because she wants to just run out of this or she's just trying to get all this stuff free, right? As we go to do this here, now I'm gonna drop this shin inside her hip here, this way. I'm gonna tuck her tag back inside her rash guard. That's optional. But once I drop this shin into her hip, my toes stay flexed on her back and now I'm gonna circle this one around and try to touch my heel to my knee here. So I bite high up on her thigh, close to her butt, right? So now once in this position here, now it's important that I keep her leg bent. If she straightens her leg, she's gonna be able to pull her leg clear easier like that. So if I keep her leg bent though, it's gonna be harder. So I do that a couple different ways. I hug the knee and I lift the foot. So to be able to mount a really good attack that doesn't, that doesn't require a ton of movement, now I'm gonna put this top leg into my armpit this way. Now, I can bring it to my armpit or I can bring my armpit to it. Usually a combination of the two is best. I put the toes here in my armpit and the goal is to take my elbow to my ribs. 
As I do that, I should get the tap before it gets there. If I get all the way there and I can get my wrist underneath, now I can cup my two hands together. And the finish of this, if this is not getting it already, is just hipping into it like I'm finishing an arm bar, right? So it's a very powerful leg lock. A way that I can really set this up from here with a little bit of assistance is I get to this. And then from here, my knee is already drifting down. So I'm gonna put my shin on the outside of her, her uh, tricep, right? I'm gonna give a shout out to Maliki Friedman. He labeled this Heisengard, which is a great name. And so I think that this is a good name for this kind of position. So from here, I'm gonna drop my knee inside, shin fills the hip. Now I can let that go and circle my leg around and get the bite. Once I get that bite, I'm gonna keep the leg bent this way, foot up in the air, knee on the floor. I'm gonna put the toes back here on my armpit, close my elbow down to my ribs here, and then I'm gonna get that grip. I can go wristwatch grip, or I can get butterfly grip by reinforcing my own hand that way, okay? Now, <clears throat> I think that's a pretty good sequence. Sometimes what will happen if they have a strong structure, they get a little horizontal to you. This one's just kind of a, I'm gonna throw this in for kind of an extra, like a fun one. And plus if you hit it on your training partners, you'll definitely get style points for it. Um, so I always like to give those emotional candy kind of moves like that, right? So when we get here, the one that we're looking at now, I'm setting up the kick guard the same way, boom, this way. She's very solid in her base and she's like really trying to kind of turn away from me. So as we do that, now I'm gonna to start to circle and look at what I'm gonna do from here. This is like an Imanari roll or like a star sweep. I'm using this anchor point and I'm circling my way until I can roll over my shoulder and on up to my knees so I get to here. Now, as we do that, you notice that when I land, this knee is down, the other one's up. I'm gonna switch that immediately and drive this knee in front of her belly here, right? My arm is still draped over her hips. And so what this allows me to do now is I'm gonna use this foot separate the difference here. And as I pull back and I pull her hips back and toward me, boom, this leg comes over and through and I'm back here in the truck. From the truck, I use this foot to pull her toes toward me and I'm gonna try for that calf slicer right here. It's a really strong calf slicer and nobody likes it. If I do a bad job and she straightens the leg before I can get it, I catch it with my bottom foot and I extend my hips away and I climb the ladder here to be able to get her back, right? So now, I've used that transition to be able to not only attack her back, pull to the truck, attack for the calf slicer. She doesn't like it. She gives me her back anyway. So one more time on this one from here. Again, I'm setting up my K here. She's turning away from me. So I'm gonna spin around. This, again, it's that spin just like for the arm bar. And as I go here, I come up. I drive this knee underneath her belly like that. I grab the far foot, split the difference with my other leg. And as I go to sit back, this leg comes through and hooks in the crease of her leg here, right? That way I come up and I can get that calf slicer, almost a ham sandwich from here. If you wanna see more about compression locks, I've got a whole instructional at BJJ Fanatics over them. And so all kinds of compression locks, calf slicers, hamstrings, all that stuff, uh, bicep slicers, all of it. Again though, she doesn't like this and she extends out, I catch, I drive away, and then I snag her back off of that bit, okay? So this is not, necessarily a comprehensive guide to all things K-Guard. There's different entries, there are different uses, lots of different sweeps, that takes all kinds of cool stuff. There's lots of good resources out there on this, this position. But I wanted to give basically a kind of an overall uh, appearance of how we can get into this position. What are some useful things we can do from it? Why we would choose or elect to, to do this guard um, whenever we're rolling? And that's typically because somebody is not giving us a lot of like ostensible mistakes. So we're making things happen from our closed guard. I hope you liked it. If I left something out or if you have a question over this position that you think that I have a reasonable opinion about, be sure to drop me a comment. I'll try to address it the best I can. David, thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank you, Ed, behind the camera. And keep watching the Night Jiu-Jitsu channel. Uh, like, subscribe, share, all that kind of stuff.